What's my? Thought I saw something shoot past me then. Shout out as loud as you can, so we can hear you. Did you just try and speak? Who moved? Upstairs again, in the attic. Are you a child that's looking for your mummy? When you say running around, do you mean like a child running, running around? Yeah, it sounds like a child running around, like up and down the hallway. Is anybody here in this room? Please speak into this little red light. Don't talk to me. Yes, sir. Yes. I've been poisoned. quiet, dead-end street sits a property that is active with paranormal events that still continue to this day. When Dana Starling moved into this flat with her six-year-old daughter Lily, it was only a matter of weeks before she was experiencing strange occurrences. Shadow figures, banging and knocking, the sound of a child running up and down the hallway and items being moved. When Dean Dana's partner moved in recently, he too would also experience the strange paranormal activity. We have learned that a member of Dean's family, John, practiced witchcraft and when he was killed in a motorbike accident, several of his items were brought into the property, including a pentagram rug, figurines and witchcraft books. Dana has since experienced a man shouting at her is this the man called John, who may be still attached to his witchcraft items that is now inside the property? But, these items were not here before Dana first moved into the flat, so who is the child? Recently discovered was a small child's necklace found in Dean and Dana's bed, which had suddenly appeared from nowhere. Is this haunting connected to the land where the property now stands? So, how long have you lived here in this flat? Since August 2011. And how long was it before that something started to happen? A couple of months. A few months after. That was it. Just me and my daughter. And then it'd be, I'm up checking because I'd hear the noises. Running around, doors, cupboards. What, what would you say it was... When you say running around, do you mean like a child running running around? Yeah, it sounds like a child running around, like up and down the hallway. Or running around in the front room, or you'd hear running around. And have you ever have you ever seen anything? Actually seen a child? I've not seen a child, but I could be pottering around in the flat, tidying up. And it'd only be me here, and I would think someone's just walked past the hallway and I'd look be nothing there and then I wouldn't think of it again and then, but I've only seen that twice and it's just only in the hallway 
the lady downstairs, mm -hmm. she also hears things happen up here, and she thinks that you're home. Yeah, when I wake up. But you're not. Me. No. What What does she say that that she hears? Running around, heavy footsteps, cupboards, doors, and she messaged me, "You home? No. Nope. Well, it sounds like someone's in your house. It's not me." You've brought articles into this flat. Yep. That belong to someone that practice. Witchcraft. Possibly practiced, yeah. I think he practiced it. He was very, very into it and had everything to do with it. But we took his books that we've got on the shelf. But you've sat here on this couch. Yeah. And someone's shouted. In my ear. In, in your ear. Yeah. I was laying on the sofa here, head was on the cushion, and it, it was just like, ah, in my ear. And I just turned to my partner and said, did you hear that? They said, no. What was it? I said someone just screamed in my ear and then it happened again. I was just so when I had to sit up. <laughs> just had to sit up. Would you say that that was a, a voice or a shout of a child or a No, or a that man? was a grown man. A grown man, without a doubt. That, that shout was, that would never have come from a child. Never. So Dean, um, how long was it before that you moved into this flat? I moved in early 2016, um, but I knew Dina before that as a friend, and she explained to me some of the things that used to happen in her flat. And how long was it before that, that you saw or heard anything here? It was probably a few weeks, maybe a month, and I used to notice things like going missing and hearing things at night time, doors shutting, things like that. And what sort of things have gone missing? Um, it's not, well, missing. We'd like Dina put a key somewhere at night time. We both say, right, we know the keys are on that side. Wake up in the morning, not there, and you have to probably hunt the keys in the house and then gradually find them somewhere totally different to where we put them. And what's, have you found them in, in a place that you can't explain? Well, yeah, it's to be somewhere where we never put them. We always put our keys in the same place and you wake up and they're somewhere else. So then whatever is here then has enough force and energy to actually move things. Yeah, it likes playing hide and seek with objects. And have you had anything shout at you at all or No, I've I've heard things in the night like the running up and down the hallway or living room, um, doors because our front room door creaks when you open it, you hear that and you hear it shut again. Um, I've not heard no voices. Um, well apart from like crying which we thought was Lily, but when I found out in the morning Dina said no it wasn't Lily, she was fast asleep. And Have you got an attic? We have got a loft, but we've been told we're not allowed to use it. Who's told you that? The council. They said it's unusable. We've got the key for it, we can get in there, but we're just not allowed to store nothing up there. Do you know what's up there at all? Have you ever been in there? No, never been up there. Loud scratching and movement is heard coming from above us in the attic, followed by unexplained noises that move across the ceiling. Here's the audio enhanced. And no idea. And no idea. I ask Dean if he can open the door to the attic, but the door will not open. We try to force the door, but it still stays locked. Eventually, after an hour, Dean tries one last time and he puts in the key to the lock. It opens with ease. Something was keeping us out and did not want us to go up into the attic. We finally gained access to the attic. The whole area is spotless and no explanation could be found for the loud noises that we heard.
I telephone Dana's neighbour Chantel, who has agreed to be interviewed. She lives downstairs and she has heard the strange noises that come from the upstairs flat. Hi Chantel, it's Jeff. Hiya. Hello, how are you doing? Fine, thank you. Um, are you free to talk at the moment? Yep, I can talk now. Okay, brilliant. Um, I just wanted to speak to you about, obviously, what's going on um, in the flat upstairs from you. Okay. Um, so, th the first question I want to ask you is, um, how long have you actually lived downstairs? I've lived downstairs for three years now. For three years? So. Yep. So, did you actually move in after Dana moved in upstairs? Yes, I moved in after Dana, yeah. Oh, right, okay. Um, and since you've lived in uh, your flat, have has anything happened to you? Not in my flat, no. Nothing. So nothing's happened at all where you live now. So there's been no no strange occurrences where you're living in your flat. No. Nothing at all. Okay. So um, Dana and Dean, they've told me that um, that you've heard um, running around upstairs and banging and all sorts of things. Can you tell me yeah. a, a little bit more of what you've actually heard? Um, yeah, basically, like, they'll be out and things, or it'll be at the night time, and I hear, like, running up and down the hallway, and I message Dina, and I'll say, oh, you're awake, and she'll reply in the morning and say, it was, I wasn't awake, and I said, oh, it sounded like Lily was running up and down the hallway, and it wasn't her, and then I hear, like, random bangs, and, like, people moving furniture around, like, and stuff, when they're not in. Okay. Yeah. Has, has, has that happened a lot? Have you heard that a lot? I've heard it, I've heard it a few times, yeah. And are you 100% sure that it's actually coming from the flat above you and not from outside or anything like that? No, I'm positive it's upstairs because I can hear it like, like it sounds like we're coming from the ceiling, do you know what I mean? Yeah. But no, I would have thought maybe it sounds like, it doesn't sound like big feet, it sounds like little runner feet, like little ones. Yeah. Like around our kids' age maybe, yeah. Okay. All right. Well, thanks for thanks for your time, Chantel. That's okay. Thank you so much. I'll speak to you soon. Bye bye. Take care. Bye bye. 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 It was time to carry out a daytime EVP session to see if I could get some answers to who or what is here and within seconds of turning on the cameras and the audio equipment, a voice is captured threatening me, saying I'll kill you. Do you know who I am? Do you know who I am? Do you know who I am? Who is the child? Who's the child that's inside this flat? There's a knocking noise behind me. There's a knocking noise behind me. There's a knocking noise behind me. I placed several trigger objects in the hallway to see if I could make contact with the child. I also set up a digital recorder, a REM pod and a K2 meter. For over several hours nothing occurred until finally the K2 meter lit up fully as it was detecting a change in the electromagnetic field.
So we're here to help out uh, Dean and Dana. Um, Phil and Pete couldn't make it, unfortunately, because of personal circumstances. So we got Andy West here from Surrey Paranormal, going to help us out again. He helped us out at Tilling Down Farm. So there's just me, Andy, and Jason on the camera that are going to investigate this location tonight. Come on in, let's go. Let's see what happens. As we are making our way up to enter the property, our static night vision camera in the living room is capturing movement and banging coming from inside. Did you hear that then? There was some knocking above. I heard it's another creak. I heard it, I thought it was you. No. Upstairs again, in the attic. Hello? Is there anybody here? Within seconds of us entering into the hallway, we hear movement and noises that seem to be coming from above us in the attic. Also, a child's voice is captured and a man's voice on the audio saying, make them get out of here. Here's the enhanced audio taken from the digital recorder. Did you hear that then? There was some knocking above. I heard it, I thought it was you. No. Upstairs again, in the attic. Hello? Is there anybody here? So, is the child here? If you're here, could you try and tell us your name, please? Who's the man here? Is it you, John? The man that died on the motorbike? John? You were killed on a motorbike. Dean and Dana brought your items into the flat. Your witchcraft items. Are you still attached to them? Is that why you're here? because of those items.
was that knock? Yeah, that was in the other room. John? Are you here? We've got your rug here on the floor with a pentagram. That's where you used to practice your witchcraft. Can you let us know you're here, please? Just shout out or try and do anything just to let us know. Even if you knock on the ceiling. Can you do that for us now, please? John, is it possible you can let us talk to the little girl, the little child that's here, that's with you? We'd like to know her name. Does this belong to the little girl? This necklace? Is this yours? So there are so many items here belonging to the man who is into witchcraft. All the books, the rug, little figurines. Perhaps I've got it wrong. Perhaps it doesn't belong to the man killed on the motorbike. Perhaps you're someone else. Perhaps you're pretending to be a child. Are you going to tell me your name? We receive an EVP on my digital recorder that I am holding, saying, I am John, which is the name of the man killed on the motorbike. Are you going to tell me your name? Are you going to tell me your name? Do you like staying here? Why do you stay here? How did you become to be here? Are you part of the land? Did something happen to you here a long time ago? Something horrible happened to you? Were you murdered? Were you attacked? How long ago did this happen?
Did you just try and speak? Who moved? Movement is heard, which sounds like something being dragged or something being moved across the floor, but we could find nothing out of place. Here's the audio. Did you just try and speak? Who moved? Did you just try and speak? Who moved? Jay? Yeah? Are you moving around? Uh, not now, no. There were some quite weird noises just then. I thought it was Jason moving, that's why I was asking, because I heard something slightly to my right, which would have been there, the hallway again. <laughs> Jay? Yeah? Are you moving around? Uh, not now, no. Jay? Yeah? Are you moving around? Uh, not now, no. Andy decides to carry out an EVP session alone in the children's bedroom, whilst Jason and I take a seat in the living room. Okay Andy, we're all settled down now. Andy? Yeah. yeah? Which room are you in? I'm in this one. W what did you say there? You said, is there anybody in this room that what? I said, if there's anybody here, please talk into this light. And did you stop talking then? Yeah. There was a voice after you and I heard it from sitting in there and it wasn't from in there. Not in here at all. I hear a disembodied voice respond to Andy's question which comes from the bedroom where he is sitting. But what is so strange is that Andy hears nothing at all and when we replay the audio from Andy's digital recorder, a man's voice is clearly heard saying, don't talk to me, which is spoken directly into the recorder. It is also one of the clearest voices we have captured and needs no enhancing. Okay Andy, we're all settled down now. Well, if there's anybody here in this room, please speak into this little red light. Don't talk to me. Well, if there's anybody here in this room, please speak into this little red light. Don't talk to me. Yeah. What's my? Thought I saw something shoot past me then. 
Jason sees something go past him, but it is not captured on any of our cameras. But what is captured is an EVP from Jason's full spectrum camera saying, move body. Yeah. What's my? I thought I saw something shoot past me then. Yeah. What's my? I thought I saw something shoot past me then. We leave Jason alone to see if the child or John, the man killed on the motorbike, and owner of the witchcraft possessions which are now inside the property, would communicate. Are you a child? Are you a child that's looking for your mummy? We could hear you saying, Mummy. Why are you calling out for your mum? Can't you find her? Jason hears nothing or sees nothing when alone, so Andy and I return to carry out the final part of our investigation. Come and talk to us. We heard a child earlier calling out for mummy. Is that why you're here? You're looking for your mum? What's your mum's name? Shout out as loud as you can so we can hear you. They're creaking over here. Shout out as loud as you can so we can hear you. They're creaking over here. Come on. Come down the hallway. Make some noise for us. Throughout our investigation, Jason took several pictures on a normal camera and a full spectrum camera, which reveals anomalies. In these first set of pictures, all looks normal, until the final one that shows something moving through the air. Here is the photo enhanced. In this photo taken with the full spectrum camera and after several enhancements, a shadow can be seen on the wall around three feet tall, which looks like a child.
and just to the left of the small figure, a face can be seen. These two anomalies only appear in this photo and not in any of the others that were taken in succession.